So in today's video, we are going to be talking about Zentangles. A Zentangle is basically a giant doodle, okay? So this is something that took me multiple hours to create, and you can see the size of the paper is fairly small. The idea behind a Zentangle is it is supposed to be Zen. So it is supposed to be something that is relaxing. It is supposed to be something that you can work on a little bit at a time. For your Zentangle, you are going to really only use two materials. You're gonna use a piece of paper. Now, if you're doing this as a sketchbook assignment, you can find an empty page in your sketchbook to work from. If you are um, doing this for a different class, maybe I'm having you do a larger scale Zentangle, drawing paper works the best, just clean white paper. But you can imagine that you could do this over um, a piece of colored construction paper. You could do this over an old book. But drawing materials, um, a Sharpie pen is going to be your best bet. Any pen that you have will work. I would suggest if you have um, pens that glide on a little smoother, some of the older um, just kind of ballpoint pens maybe don't work quite as well. They're not quite as satisfying to use. Um, we have Sharpie pens in the classroom. If you are doing this from home, any pen works. Typically black is what you will use, but again, you can spice it up and use some color if you'd like. One thing you're gonna notice is that I'm not using pencils or erasers, and the reason for that is if you accidentally make a mistake, you have to use your creativity to figure out how to incorporate it into your design. For your Zentangles, you have three different options to start it. So option one is gonna look something like this, and I'm calling this the picture Zentangle. So it's where you start off with a picture that you've drawn. So you can see I drew a simple rainbow here, I drew clouds, and then I have some raindrops, some vertical lines with some more raindrops in the background. So for this, this is the only time that I'll say you can use a pencil. Um, so you wanna start off and draw just the outlines of everything, have these on, their pa on your paper. If you Google Zentangle, you're gonna find lots of examples of this. It's pretty common for people to draw animals, designs of their name. Um, maybe it's more of an abstract design, but you're sort of drawing the pencil outline. So to be clear, when I drew my outline, really all I did is I drew the arc of the rainbow in, I drew where I wanted the droplets to be, um, I drew the shape of the clouds, I did not draw any of the patterns within. Okay. If you're going to do this type of Zentangle, you might notice that my paper is broken up into lots of small shapes. I don't just have one thing on the center of my paper with a bunch of empty space. The reason for that is you're gonna be putting patterns, different patterns into each of these sections. And if you have really big spaces, I can guarantee you from doing this on my own, lots of times that you're gonna get really sick of some of the patterns, especially if you, like if I didn't have this in the background and if I did this background all the same pattern, I would get kind of bored with it. So you wanna break up your paper into smaller shapes. So I'm gonna demonstrate on this piece of paper here and we're gonna call this the squiggle Zentangle. Now, um, I'm not gonna do a whole Zentangle for you to watch, that would be way too, way too long, um, but I like to do kind of a squiggly line. Okay, and you can see I'm just letting my pen, I'm doing this with a pen, not a pencil. I'm letting my pen kind of squiggle through the paper. I wouldn't want to, you know, go through and kind of color it and make impossibly tiny spaces. But I'm just starting with one line. I'm letting this line loop and intersect with the other lines. Uh, maybe it comes off the page, maybe it starts again here. I like to do loops. Maybe you wanna do something other than loops. Again, totally up to you. So you wanna start off with something like this, and then you wanna go around and identify where you have really big spaces. So for me, usually, so if I look, all of this area here is all, I would call it one section, okay? So I'm gonna draw some lines in here. I wanna make sure that they kind of they kind of flow and it seems like they belong. 
So I might draw some lines in here to kind of section off. So instead of having that one big section all the way around the border, I've now broken it up into a couple of small sections. Maybe I'll do another one here, another one here. Those lines that I draw, I want it to feel natural. I don't want it to feel like um, I put those in as an afterthought. So I'm gonna fill up my page with squiggles. Um, the squiggle method is a good way if you're having a hard time getting started. And then in each section here, you are going to be doing a different Zentangle pattern. So this third option or the third type of Zentangle you can use, I'm calling the radial design. So you can see on my paper, I am starting from the center and I'm just doodling essentially all the way around. We call it radial because it's radiating from a central point. This is the option for those of you who really like to wing it. Um, again, there's no right or wrong, just like with any Zentangle. I was rushing through this design, so if I were doing this for real, I would take some more time to make it neater, clean it up a little bit. I was doing it while Blake was taking a nap, so I was trying to rush through it. Um, but you can see how I keep going all the way around. I kind of start on one side and I work my way around. It starts to get a little off. I'm not taking time to measure. I'm not worrying about if it is perfect. I am simply creating shapes or spaces to fill in with doodles and design. It ultimately will end up looking sort of like a mandala when you're done. And with all of these options, we wanna make sure we're filling up the paper. In this example, I do not get the chance to fill up the paper while I was recording, um, but what I expect out of all of you is a paper filled with Zentangle designs. So some tips for creating a Zentangle. Tip number one is going to be work small and detailed. So for example, say I'm going to be filling in these two shapes, okay? Um, if I'm using my small Sharpie and I want to just do sort of a checkerboard pattern like you saw me do before, okay? I could fill my shape up like that or I could do something much more detailed so I'm working with intricate patterns, meaning tight together. Those look really similar right now, but now maybe I want to go through and maybe every other one gets a dot in the center, okay? Um, like I'm filling up a checkerboard. Okay, now I could make that even more complicated and now maybe the boxes that are white, I go through and I draw a white dot in the center and I fill in the outside with my pen, okay? This is where if you are using a thicker Sharpie, you are not going to be able to be so detailed. So tip one is working small and detailed. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Okay, so that is something we're looking for. That is something that is a little too simple or basic, okay? Um, the second tip so tip number two here is going to be even space. Meaning, I want there to be about the same amount of black space and the same amount of white space, okay? So even space here. We don't want there to be a design that looks something like, oh, <laughs> I'm just stuck with the lines again something like that, okay? That is not detailed, it's not small patterns. There's not an even amount of black space and white space. There's a lot more white space there than there is black. So that would not be something that we are looking for. 
okay? And you can see in my image over here, even though I added color, you can see that in each section, there's a pretty fair amount of black and white space. It's really clear in this pattern right here, okay? Tip number three is going to be steel. Well, <laughs> steel patterns, okay? Um, go to Google. If you Google Zentango or Zentangle patterns, you are going to find lots and lots of ideas, okay? Tip number four is going to be repeat. And I'm gonna come in for a close up on this. So if you see, if you can look at mine, there we go. I tend to have a couple patterns that I repeat over and over, okay? Um, one of my favorite patterns to do is this sort of circular pattern. Um, you can see I did it there, it's right there. I have it in the red arc of my rainbow, okay? You might even be able to find it, oh, here it is again. There it is again. I like to repeat patterns because to come up with the same pattern over and over again gets to be a little difficult, okay? And my last tip for you, hopefully you can't hear, baby Blake just woke up. She's crying, I hope you can't hear her in the background. I'll make this fast. Um, is going to be to add lines. So for example, I'm filling up this space Okay, um, say I have some triangular shapes. Maybe I want it to kind of look like mountains or triangular fish scales or something like that, okay? You might think, oh, this looks pretty cool. You know, I like that, that looks really neat. Kind of looks like a turtle shell maybe. Um, but it's not very small pattern and it's not very detailed. So I'm gonna go through, <laughs> she's really crying. I hope you can't hear that. I swear I'm not a bad mom, I'm not neglecting her. Um, you wanna go through and add lines. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing, um, but I might add a line and then maybe here I might add a little shape that I color in. You can certainly have areas of space that you color in, that is okay. All right. So I would continue that all the way up and that is much more detailed um, than what I started with, right? The last tip is an optional tip for you. So the last tip is going to be color. I'm gonna show you in the next minute or so, I'm gonna show you some more examples of Zentangles. Typically Zentangles are black and white. You can see in my example here, I went through and added color. You do not have to add color, but it's something that you can do to kind of jazz yours up a little bit. I use colored pencil to um, add this in, and the reason I did so is because I wanted to be able to see, I, mine was really busy, and I felt like at the end of it, the rainbow shape and the clouds and the raindrops, it, it kind of all got lost because there was so much going on. So I wanted to go through and add color to divide the individual section. And I use, I think in the rainbow itself, I just use markers, just washable markers. You could also use Sharpies if you'd like. And then I use colored pencil in the background. Another great option for this, if your paper is a little thicker, is watercolor paint. Um, I would not use like an acrylic paint because it might cover up some of your Sharpie. Here are some different examples of Zentangles that I took off of Google. You can use these as inspiration and take some patterns, take some ideas from them, but the overall design should be your own. Don't stress, um, be creative, work with your mistakes, and have fun with your Zentangle.